I think people get the one part of immortality where you don't die, and they often relate that only to a spiritual sense, that, well, when you die, you go to heaven. Well, that's not immortality. That's just your spirit living and soul living on in another place. Immortality is what Jesus said. Eat my flesh, drink my blood in John 6, and you won't die. And he did very clearly equate it to physical death because he said, this isn't like the bread that your your ancestors ate in the wilderness and then died. This is the bread that's come down for heaven. If you eat this bread, you're not going to die. Um, now, obviously, a lot of people have ate that bread since and died. So there's a disconnect to what he said and our experience. And that is the problem for a lot of people because they look at the probably millions of people who've died uh, since that time you know billions probably but millions of christians maybe billions of christians who've died and think well it didn't work <laughs> well because they didn't believe it in reality they didn't believe it meant that they wouldn't physically die they they made an agreement with death because they thought death is where you got to heaven you know so they wanted to die to go to heaven eventually yeah so i, I think Going back to what Jesus said and then reconnecting the reason for immortality is he loves us unconditionally. Therefore, he doesn't want that unconditional love to run out. He doesn't want it's going to be, well, that's the end of it because your time's up. You know, unconditional love is what links immortality to the fact that we will continually be able to experience that unconditional love in that reality here on earth and when heaven and earth get reconnected in the in the correct relationship then we won't be limited to just being on earth we will have the freedom to operate as adam would have operated if he had continued on the pathway of ascension into maturity jesus came to undo all the works of the evil one destroy them he didn't say he came to destroy the evil one just the works. What are the works? They robbed and killed and destroyed rather than having abundant life. So anything contradictory to abundant life, Jesus didn't fall. Um, so I think when it comes to looking at living forever, eternal life, there's different aspects to it. There's quality. So I need the quality of what life from an eternal perspective has to offer not just the quantity of well i won't run out of days because i wouldn't want to carry on living all those days without a change in the quality of the life i can live you wouldn't want to live forever in a state of being in a wheelchair being a paraplegic would you yeah that wouldn't be fun so you, it has to go with health healing health and immortality so there's a sense where we have to have to look at the actual quality of the life which is what we say eternal life is the life which comes out of the eternal aspect of god and how he created us to be therefore that eternal life is a measure of quality it's a measure of ability it's a measure of living multi-dimensionally not being limited to one plane of existence it's not being tied to being stuck on earth forever and ever now when it comes to the words in the bible forever and ever everlasting don't mean that they actually are the word in the old testament olam um, which actually means for a distinct period so the words translated that anios in greek olam in the old testament has a defined period which is an era if you like but that era can be unending in a sense it doesn't have to or it can be changing but you still remain in it you know so there's a sense where when you look at it and look at the correct translation of those words olam and anios and if you read a literal translation like you know young's literal translation of the bible it translates every one of those words to the ages or to the end of the age or for the ages of ages so whatever ages to come is i'm gonna not die in them i may be changed in them 
because I may need a different form of body to be able to live in the next stage or the next stage or the next stage. Who knows? But this body is designed to be able to be transformed so that I can live whatever sort of life I need to have. So there's a quality and an ability that comes with the eternal aspect of it, which is much more attuned to multidimensional, not limited by time and space perspectives. And I think if we understand that it isn't just not, we're not going to die, but we are going to be transformed and matured into a place where we can live multidimensionally. We can live in every moment. We can expand and contract time. Time is our friend and not our enemy. Time works with us and not against us. That we can live a completely different way than we're conditioned into living, then that's something I want. You know, uh, and I want to know more and more and more about who God created me to be, which is the quality of that life, abundant life. You know, I don't want to live anything less than abundant life because that's what I was promised. Jesus said you can have life in abundance. Well, that's what I want. What does that mean? Well, I think that is going to be expanded and expanded and expanded. So we'll realize it means more and more and more and more beyond what perhaps we may even be able to understand right now. But I do think that is the intention. And it requires a period of time to the end of the age, to the end of the age, to the end of the age, to fulfill what that age needs. So whatever we need to do in this age for the other ages to come, then we need the time to be able to fulfill that and then to go on into whatever is for the next period of time and the next period of time. Or time may not be the same as it is now. Time is relative to the speed of light. If we come closer to the light, who is God, then maybe that speed is different from what our natural light speed is. Therefore, we may not be subject to time and space and travel and all the things that we now are seem to be bound by because we we are not living from that sort of eternal quality, which is not coming from limitation or restriction. So I do think there's a lot for us to uncover, discover and realize about immortality, which isn't just, well, you won't die. It's like, well, I might not die, but I certainly don't want to live if I'm not living in the fullness of what this body, mind, spirit, soul and body is designed to live in. You know, which I think is definitely more than what most people have any thought of. So the word needs to be expanded somewhat to include quality as well as quantity. And also to be connected to the reason it's there is because God does ne never wants us not to be around he wants us to be around so that we can fulfill everything that we were destined to fulfill be ourselves you know and adam and eve would not have died if they had not chosen to walk away from life and follow a different path but they did and we all died with them but now we're all resurrected and alive in Christ. So what does that really mean to be alive in Christ? I want to know fully what that means to be alive in Christ. What does it really mean? That I think is what has been brought to light through the good news, immortality. So it's been brought to the light when now we need to engage it to find out what it truly means and how to fully experience it. And uh, I believe as we do, we will discover that it is beyond what we could have ever imagined or thought it to be with capabilities that are able to do everything Jesus did and greater. Because that's what he told us we could do. And he did some things which were operating with a knowledge of creation that most people didn't have. So he was able to do things like walk on water, disappear, move through people, sort of quantumly tunnel his way around. He did all that stuff. You know, he, he operated with a completely different thing. He was able to multiply things and increase things and had the capacity to understand, obviously, how things were created. So the quantum realm, 
you know so i think it's all sorts of things that are linked to creation from a quantum perspective of this is how this works how creativity works that we're co-creators not just co-heirs how our mind works how our consciousness is able to choose how creation responds to us when we begin to speak the authoritative word of god as an oracle of god that light responds to us that light forms reality around us everything becomes very much different when we begin to realize the capacities we have as children of god to be like him we're made in his image and his likeness to be like him and jesus said you do everything i did and greater so i think we need to take hold of that and then have our minds and consciousnesses expanded so we can fully grasp what that really means thank you for watching our youtube channel we really appreciate you taking the time if you enjoy these videos would you please take a moment to like comment and subscribe it really does help thank you very much